Podtacular episode 327, Community Evolved, for October 27th, 2012. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a special edition of Podtacular. We have some guests on from Forward Unto Dawn today to talk about a project that they have started over at Kickstarter. And they are Isaac Frankel, a.k.a. Final Postmortem. How's it going, everyone? And then we have Danny. I'm sorry, I don't know your last name, <laughs> but slightly live. Hello. Hello. So you both have been on the show before, actually. Uh, Postmortem, you, you more recently. Uh -huh. Yep, just within the last week. Yep. Yeah, you've been on Slightly Live. You've been on a few times with Keith. I don't remember you. Yeah. Where am I? Oh, yeah, you... you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. Cool. Yep, the, the numerous times. I think you've been on probably at least three or four times. Maybe, yeah. Sounds about right. Maybe, maybe. All right, cool. So we are bringing this podcast to you because they have started a Kickstarter program that highlights the halo community at large and we are pretty good friends with our pals over there at ford and to dawn and we've done some collab stuff in the past and we figured we have them on and try to promote their project so i will hand the stage over to you guys and you can talk about what the project is and what you plan to do with it all right so initially this project came about when we were trying to figure out some ways that we could kind of expand the scope of the website of forward dawn.com um, and Danny was kind of pitching a, a couple of various ideas to us, and, and me and Dave weren't really feeling any of them. And uh, we felt that that was because everything that had been suggested so far was a little bit too narrow and focused and a bit too concerned with stuff that we were already doing on the site that we didn't need to do any more of. So we kind of turned the idea around and thought, well, how can we contribute back to the community as a whole? Yeah, I had I'd pitched a, a few different ideas to um, to the rest of the guys, and we were thinking interviews with people on the side. We were thinking maybe going digital with an app or something silly. But um, it was also coming up to our two year anniversary of our site being up and around. So I kind of wanted to push for something to do, and uh, that didn't happen. So um, we spoke to a few other people and. One thing led to another, and we had a little idea of doing a book, but we didn't generally have a, a focus. And uh, well, it took off from there really with uh, with Isaac and and Dave nudging it in the right direction, so to speak. Very nice. So, what's the title of the project? <laughs> it's cheesy as hell. It's called Community Evolved. We uh, we we. We struggled for a while to find a, an appropriate name. We were going by the, the name Aether because I, I thought that was a good little joke out ourselves of of something with something with like real substance to it. <laughs> we didn't think it was going to happen. It was it really seemed pie in the sky up until a few weeks ago, whenever we were start crunching the numbers and we're planning things out. Then something became very real, very fast with the Kickstarter. Yeah, and uh, after after the point where we kind of decided, where we narrowed down what we were going to do, um, I, I believe shortly after that was when I went to PAX. Um, this is PAX Prime, uh, and I got to kind of talk about the project and, and ask some of the people there, some of the community members there, if they wanted to get involved. And I know you, Dustin, were one of them. Right. So now, a lot came out of that. We got a lot of... I guess a lot of people showed their interest there. And and really, for me, it showed how possible this book would be, like how how attainable our goals were. So in terms of the content of the book, what kind of stuff are you really looking to include? You can only do so much with the book, but there's also some other formats you're looking at delivering content to the end goal of this project. Can you go into a little bit more detail on what kind of content we're going to be seeing in the books, if we're going to see being artwork or it's, if it's going to be stories, interviews, uh, podcasts, give us kind of the rundown of what kind of content we're going to see in this final product. 
Right. The um, what we're doing with the book, we're trying to make it a more formal sort of presentation of a book. We didn't want to, we didn't want to just throw the kitchen sink. And if you know what I mean, it would be too disorganized and trying to fit photos, artwork, and then fan fiction stuff and everything. It would just, it would just be a mess. So what we decided to do uh, was structure it in such a way that each each section would have an overall narrative and um, throughout that narrative we would have interviews with people relevant to that section so I'll give you an example um, we've dedicated uh, one whole section to HBO because we feel that, that, uh, that HBO is very important to the community and uh, it's almost the like the that, birthplace of the Halo community that's that's right <laughs> and yeah, that really and then what what Claude's done is is an incredible an incredible thing, and it's not just one thing. You know, it's not just HBO. It's the people that that have come from there, have passed through there, that 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 base themselves there. So, as HBO has developed over the over over the past more than a decade, you know, it's 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 become this focal point. So we thought, well, there's no other place like that. It's the birthplace almost of almost where the, the whole fandom started. So we'll we'll dedicate the whole chapter to that. And as as you'll see it in the book, you'll you'll see that we'll we're going over the like the whole history of it. We're going through different things that have come from it, different people, different projects. And you'll you'll see an interview with um with Claude there. Um we've re- we've already recorded the interview and have it transcribed and we provided some of it up in our, our Kickstarter page we download and in our example design example. So that's that's the sort of thing you'll see in terms of layout. It'll be uh, an overall narrative uh, detailing uh, the the particular subject of the chapter, inter interspliced then with these interviews. And uh, in terms of the the content, we're looking we're looking to cover everything when it comes to the fandom. Every sort of aspect of the fandom we think can be distilled into our into our different sections, and we'll do our best. To provide this sort of overview of where it's come from, who's been involved, what's being involved, what's come out of it, and um, hopefully where it's going as well in in terms of the future. But that's that's the actual book itself. But um, I think I think we explain some of the other stuff that we have uh, we have planned in terms of little extras because because it's a Kickstarter we do have we had to just provide an additional sort of framework around the book. That we hadn't originally intended, but we were happy we were able to provide. Are you talking about the incentives or the stuff yes. for the higher tiers? Everything. 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 Well, as of right now, we have we've contacted Levi Hoffmeyer, who goes by Leviathan, uh, Garrett Post, uh, TD, who goes by TD Spiral, and then of course Stephen Loftus, Scale Master, um, and all three of them are going to be providing us with unique stuff. Uh, the two artists are providing us with prints of their work. Um, for anyone who contributes over a certain amount, you get to choose uh, any print of your choice from Levi's collection. Uh, and then Garrett, who we also got in touch with uh, at PAX, has supplied us with cover art for a book. And if you haven't had a chance to check it out, you should really just go and look at the Kickstarter page. Even if you're not going to contribute, just take a look at this artwork because it, it really is amazing. And um, we're going to be providing uh, high-resolution copies of that to backers. And then Stephen Loftus has agreed to help us print his scale charts. So you can pick the subjects that you want portrayed on the scale charts, and we can print those out for you. And these are all easily framed. They, they'll look great on a wall. And then one of, actually, surprisingly for me, one of the big selling points has been that uh, Stephen has also agreed to print out or, – or not print out, but produce – T-shirts that have your multiplayer emblem as well as your gamer tag on the back, and and people have really been eating that up. Uh, uh, other than that, uh, if you contribute seventy five dollars or more, we're going to be providing any additional content that we secure along the way. Uh, I think we're going to be talking about that in a few minutes here, but we've already gotten some some great stuff. Some One of it. the examples, <laughs> yeah, it's a we're really excited to announce this. We've already talked about it in a few places, but we really want people to hear about this exciting news because it was awesome for us as well. Uh, but one example would be uh, the Louis Wu, the Claude Rivera interview. Uh, we'll have the full audio probably edited um, and uh, formatted in a way that's that's presentable for people to listen to and as well as the transcriptions. Um, 
and uh, and then at the final tier, along with the T-shirt, if you contribute over one hundred twenty-five dollars, which is quite a bit, but we're we're really surprised by how many people have actually uh, gone for that tier. Actually, the majority of backers so far, which is amazing. Um, but if you do that, you get an article or a podcast on a subject of your choice, written or produced by us. Yeah, we're we're actually we didn't realize how how popular that was going to be, and we're we're dreading <laughs> a big massive workload of people going. I want an article on helmets. <laughs> oh boy! Uh, I want an article on uh, the color purple. I, I think that's why I made the recommendation of like within reason. <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll try. We'll we'll work it out with the people that um, what uh, that have got that tier. We're we're more than happy to keep our and, word. And the other nice thing is that most of the people who are backing that tier are some of the hardcore community, the Halo community members. And I think uh, for the most part, they're all pretty trustworthy and reasonable, and they understand that this is going to be work for us, and we're doing them a favor, and they're doing us a favor, and it's it's just kind of a nice trade off. And that will come after the book's done, by the way, after the book's done. <laughs> yeah, for now, our primary focus is on making sure that the book is out with, and it, and it meets the level of quality that we're aiming for, and hopefully we'll actually surpass that. Yeah, we're, we're kind of bowled over. A lot of people have offered us their support uh, to help us with our research, because um, there's no way, even three people doing their best, there's no way we could cover and know everything about the entire scene, the entire community over the past 10 years. So the more people we can work together with to help us p- provide that bigger picture for the book, the better. So um, if anyone wants to get in touch with us, we'd be more than happy to, to listen to them and see if, uh, if we can help paint that bigger picture whenever it comes to the time to do so. Very nice. So, uh, there's been an update that you released, I think, two days ago, as of this recording, and you actually fulfilled your pledge pretty quickly after it got released. Um, your pledge yeah, was eleven hundred dollars, and I th- I think it was done within a few hours, right? We had surpassed <laughs> our goal within the first hour. Yeah, the Whoa. thing is, the way we structured our or the Kickstarter, the way we structured it, we didn't want really to rip people off. We didn't want really to make as a profit so we we put things down as low as possible we put everything down to cover exactly what it was going to cover and that's it and because of that we kind of lowballed it we thought no we put this amount it covers everything we need to do and anything over that will make more books and that's exactly what we want you know we didn't want to fluff around we didn't really we just wanted to make sure the whole thing's done and it's done the way we want it to and that we were not overcharging people. And that's why we set it at that at that uh, goal. And the fact that <laughs> within the hour, we hadn't even finished, we hadn't even started talking about it. We had planned to go on the different forums and spread the word. We had barely begun to do that when we actually had reached our goal, which was kind of insane. It was like, what? We, we, Stop that. <laughs> it was a bit weird. It was unexpected and we were we were just bowled over and, and it's 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 just gone upwards and we're really happy to to see that confidence in us and that support from people. Um and uh we've got about twenty odd days to go and we're we're almost at five hundred percent of our original uh, funding goal. I yeah, uh, never anticipated it would get this far. <laughs> no, we Not don't. at all. But, I remember uh, the, the first day that we, when we launched, I was just sitting there because I, I had to put it up during my, my uh, lunch hour at school. And I was just sitting there in class with the Kickstarter open, just watching it roll in. And, and eventually word about this Kickstarter got around to the faculty. And I guess it's um, all the faculty at the school are talking about it now, and it's it's been featured on our school webs or my school website, and words getting around to places that I never anticipated it would actually get to. And we've had a lot of backers through Kickstarter, you know, who weren't referred by any aspect of the any community within the larger Halo community. So it's really cool that it's not just the exclusive Halo fans who are coming forth to support this project. That's pretty crazy. 
because you'd think something like this would be kind of close knit, but I guess the fact that it's getting out into the wider public is is great for you guys. And this is only the total that we have here is only nine days into the campaign, right? Like it's a thirty day campaign. Yeah, thirty days. So I mean, we're not even as of this recording, we're not even a third of the way done with it. So you guys still have a potential to get even more funds and do even more cool stuff. Yeah, we looked at a, uh, I think there's a website called Can He Kick It? And, and you, know, you, t- you type in your URL and, and it, or your URL and it'll, uh, it'll pull up the stats for your website. And you can do a linear progression and see, based on your rate of uh, funding so far, where you'll end up by the end of your campaign. And uh, linear progression isn't entirely accurate because, you know, people's interest is going to wax and wane. But but as of right now, the linear progression says we're going to sit at over $10,000 by the end, which is... I, I wouldn't be... Yeah, just, that sounds about right. It, I, I still don't well, with, with Halo that. 4, just with the release amazing. of Halo 4, you might get a jump there as well. Right, and, and we may or may not have planned that intentionally. Then, then, then again, people could be busy playing Halo, they worry about some book. Yeah, there's that too. Yeah, but if it's Halo and there's like, oh, this is about community stuff. That I'd be interested in seeing that. Oh, we wanted to get the book out and this and in terms of the Kickstarter, we wanted to get this part out before Halo Four came out. You know, it was just if we do it afterwards, people will may not be enthusiastic. We just didn't know how people would be afterwards. Um so we wanted right. to make sure we, we got started before it came out and it was a little bit touch and go because um, the planning, some things, you know, it's, the moon's not aligning up as it were. And uh, it's hard to get that stuff coordinated whenever you have really done it before and you're going in blinding. You don't know how things are going to add up and you, you think, OK, we'll launch on this date. And that's a week later. OK, we'll launch this date. And that's another week later. But things like that, you you learn as you go along. Um, like I said, none of us have ever done a Kickstarter before, so it was a real real learning experience getting that part of it all set up and um to be honest we're we're really happy with where the amount stands right now we're like that we're not after more money for the sake of more money if anyone wants to back us um if anyone just wants a copy of the book this is going to be their chance to do so right now and 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 to get a copy and probably we haven't decided about what we're going to do in future so right now it's your only chance to get copies through the Kickstarter, and if you if you donate one dollar or a hundred, you're guaranteed a copy of the book, no matter how much you decide to donate. So right now, if if it doesn't go up a single dollar, we'd be happy. If it goes up five or even ten thousand, we'd still be happy. You know, we're we're just really really ecstatic that it's got to the point where it is, and we couldn't be any happier. Right. So is there a certain threshold for maybe something that you were thinking about doing, but then you kind of backed off on the idea because of, you didn't want to necessarily fund it, but now with the possibility that uh, of looking at what kind of money you might get, is there something else that you would like to include in the project afterwards? <sighs> That's we, we talked about, about doing stretch goals. Um, that's a common Kickstarter thing, doing a stretch goal. Whenever you get so much past your original funding goal, to provide other incentives and bonuses and whatever else, and like I said before, we costed our project downwards in terms of the end, the end cost to our, to the supporters, so that what you pay for is what you get, and we felt very strongly about that. So we we don't actually have the same maneuverability. A typical Kickstarter project would have, in terms of, well, we get ten thousand more dollars, we can make things look better, and then get in a boat, and then we can send it up to the moon. We can't, we don't have that ability to add on more significant sort of things that we can do, if you know what I mean, because because of it. But um, we we have been resourceful, and we're looking. We we've, we've been looking. And we will continue to look at things that we can add to it. The, a, a good example, like um, like we were talking about there, is our, our interview with Steve Downs. That was not something we had planned at all. And we managed to get out there. And um, we got we got a proper camera crew out with us. And, that's, and uh, by the way, if you haven't heard this before, 
uh, if this is your first time hearing about Community Evolved, we interviewed Steve Downs. And because for those who don't might. know who Steve Downs is, <laughs> who doesn't know who Steve Shame Downs is? Shame on you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. That's but, cool. But that's that's, that's, that's the sort of thing we're trying to do. We're trying to add as much onto it as we can. And it won't be for one tier. Or it'll be trying to give everyone as much as we can give them, if you know what I mean. Right. And um, one of the things that's important to keep in mind is that because this is Halo, because this is Microsoft, we have to be very careful about how we go about pro- approaching their content usage rules, which clearly states we can't make any money. So, it you know, of course, we're respecting that, and, and it's been very important to us along the way to consider every single bit of, of funding that's going to go into and come out of this. And, and at the end, it was simpler for us to have as little left over to have to figure out what to put it into so that we can still maintain those the, the respect of those rules. Um, and so that was part of the scaling it back so that each tier pays for the rewards that you get and then whatever copy of the book you wanted to receive. That's pretty cool. Do you have plans to make a few extra copies and give, give them away like a PAX or something, like PAX Prime? We're discussing it. As of right now, like any additional copies... Uh, from our end, of course, would be paid for out of pocket. So um, we haven't actually gotten to a point where we've considered discussing that with other community members. Um, it's just kind of on the back burner for now because we're still focused on just kind of, I guess, honestly, sitting back and, and watching the Kickstarter do its do its business because we've been working on that. I think we were planning to launch up to the Kickstarter for about four weeks, so about a month that we were working on that. So it's nice to see the hard work pay off. And as well, we're after the funding phase, we'll be moving on to the research and writing phase and just you know, getting the thing made. And I think after we have the book in our hand, we will be exploring just what else we can do with it at that point. But right now, we just want to focus on, on just living up to what's expected of us and what people are wanting from us. And um, we'll give more thought to more things after that whenever we get to that stage yeah and i guess um i guess while we're talking about stretch goals uh one thing that did come up um and it's it's kind of been shot down unanimously and uh, but i think it would be interesting for you guys to hear this um we did consider because we've got a film crew they helped us with the kickstarter video they helped us with the steve downs interview and depending on what else comes about in the future, I can guarantee that if it's within the next year or so, they'll be involved as well. Um, they're very interested. They're, they're you know college students looking to get more professional experience. And so the idea came about from their end to do a documentary covering the creation of the book. Um, and we're still not entirely sure how we feel about that, primarily because it would require more funding and we've already received so much and it would just be it would be wrong to ask for more and we don't, we don't want to. Um, but additionally, because initially the project was supposed to be pulling away from ourselves and, and turning the focus outwards. And that's, that was part of the original, uh, one of the original things that actually got the project rolling was that agreement to, to switch the focus. I feel like a documentary covering the creation of the book would be focusing backwards towards ourself again, which is something else that we don't want to do. But I, I suppose it'd be a good thing to get the get the idea out there and and maybe if people want to give feedback on that idea it would be it would be great to hear. So I actually approached you guys with an idea of possibly doing something like a documentary of like the whole community, something that they I remember when Jen Taylor went around and did the whole like Halo community thing for Bungie, almost something like that or going around and highlighting doing like in-person interviews and just talking about the Halo community as a whole. I think that would be that would be that'd be interesting for us to do. It would it would definitely be along the lines of what the book's trying to do, but the book is a different medium. Right. So you can and have with di- that medium, different mediums. It's, it's, yeah. It's yeah, I think there there is room uh for that. Um I think the most obvious thing I would point out would be the prohibitive cost. No, whenever it comes of to travel. a book, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, we've got we, very fixed costs, but traveling and oh, I think it is it is definitely on our our list of goals for the book that as many interviews as possible that we can do in person, we're going to. 
But yeah, yeah, like Danny said, the biggest limitation is the cost of getting to and from all these various locations because the Halo community is very widespread. I mean, for, for me, anyone who's here in Chicago, it's easier because I don't have to pay for that transportation. It's just a matter of setting up the, the meeting. So and don't forget as well with a with a, with a, a film, with a book, you have the luxury of getting dozens and dozens of people involved speaking to them. With a film, you don't get that freedom. You're limited to a very specific time frame of what you can show in that time frame, and and especially in with traveling and stuff, you're looking at maybe not even half the sort of areas that the book would cover. And then even with that, you couldn't give them the same sort of focus or attention. That a written piece of work would be able to, to, to give something. So there's, it would have to, it would have to be a completely restructured whole thing, and it would be an entirely different project, even though it's 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 almost on the same avenue. Right. Okay. Uh, do you want to kind of go into a list of personalities or people that you're looking at? That you're trying to get, and people that oh, you know it's you a have huge list. <laughs> we don't want to, We do not want to say who we're trying to get. Um, I have respect for those people, and I respect. I have respect for the people that we're still talking to. Um, obviously, we want to talk to everyone, but that's not that's not possible for sure. So they're like, we we already heard that you did some stuff with Steve Downs. Um, is there stuff like with Tim Dadabo? Um, Stacker, any of the other three four three people um, over there? All, all we can say at this point is that we are exploring all possibilities. And and one thing as well, um, this this is going to be a book for the fans and about the fans. And whenever whenever we had a chance to talk with Steve, we we thought it was a, it was a brilliant opportunity. It was a, it was a chance to get someone who's worked on the games and basically just poke him and quiz him about. About us, but about the fans, but everyone who's been doing everything for the past ten years, and outside of the professional side of things, and um, get his opinion on it and his thoughts and whatnot. But uh, we we I I we've deliberately not gone after Microsoft employees, Bungie employees, or anyone from three four three. And I think it's out of respect for the the separation between the fans and the developers. Um, if we were interviewing developers, it will be a different conversation than we would have them with a fan, and I think that would change the entire tone of what we're trying to do. Right, but there are and, some people that have come from the community. Oh, there's a lot of people. <laughs> that, that, that's kind of what I was asking. So. We've crossed over, and um, we will we will speak. We will be we will be recognizing the people that have crossed over from fan to professional, but we will not be featuring those specific people in the book and just basically to avoid number one to avoid legalities but number two as well just to keep the tone and keep the intent behind the book sort of pure of what we want to try and do i think with 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 steve that's probably the extent that we would head in that direction but in terms of the specific employees of of the of the companies of the developers involved uh i don't think we would really do that all right. I, yeah, I see where you're coming from with that. It's not like we don't want to. Obviously, we, we we have friends who who work there. We know the people that work there just as much as as anyone would. And and doing what we do is part of the community, and they're great people. Well, like, I I would love to sit there and pick BS Angel's head apart for an interview to put in the book, but <laughs> in terms of the practicalities of doing it and all the all the red tape, it's just it just wouldn't work. I don't think. Yeah. You know? right. So. That's just the way it is, and it's unfortunate. Because um, like I, said, I actually interviewed um, uh, Jeremy from uh, from Fever Three a while back, uh, Mr. Vociferous from the community from Ascent Justice, and uh, it was a, an email interview. And um, it was about you know the the visual guide that came out not so long ago. Hmm. All right. And um, it was an email interview. I sent him the questions in advance, and he, he got back to me about them, but. Uh, it wasn't just a straightforward, here, answer these questions for me, would you? Yeah, sure thing. Here's my answers. It involved a lot of waiting for departments and then checks and then red tape. <laughs> and that was for one simple interview on a very, very specific subject of a product that was coming out, you know what I mean, there and then. And I thought that would have been relatively straightforward, but 
and then try and then this sort of thing we'd be we'd have to go forward and backwards between bungee guys two for three people general people who work at microsoft and and then and there's always a case as well especially with bungee some people may not want to talk about it they may not want to talk about that particular thing anymore and then and then all the hoops you're jumping <laughs> yeah so yeah unfortunately we, we've 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 experienced the red tape and we know for a fact in this case it will be prohibitive you make you make a good point you make several good points <laughs> <laughs> um but i'm assuming you're gonna have people like louis Wu, uh probably keep from the running riot damien last damien from the spartan life uh, and some of those other people on in, included in this book, is there kind of a certain range of topics you're looking for? You're just kind of looking for anything and everything that just fits the general Halo gaming community as a whole. Well, in general, we want to do everything we can to cover every single aspect of the Halo community. Um, that said, one of the big limitations is going to be, as with any book, the amount of pages that you have to work with. Um, so unfortunately... There are going to be people or aspects of the community that probably aren't going to get as much focus as we would like to give them. And that's just something that is going to be unavoidable for us, given the scope of the project. Um, But we're making sure that every single community over the last 10 years at least has a spot in the book somewhere and is talked about and featured in to some extent. Yeah, we'll do our best. It's not going to be something that's easy for us to juggle, but it's, it's something we're going to have to just do our best and work through. We, we, I'll say now, if if there's any sort of omissions, which we hope they won't, but they inevitably will be, that, that they're not intentional. We're not, we're not, we haven't got any agenda against any persons or groups or websites or anything. So we we're not going in there trying to leave people out. And that's not something we would want to do. And we're going to try our best, and we'll just have to, just have to be vigilant. And, 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 and do our research. Right. And then also there are going to be some people who request to remain out of the book. And we've received a few requests already. And that's just the way it's going to be. And we're going to respect those wishes. Um, yes, yes. So that's also another limitation. Yeah. We, we're, we're, what's the thing? We're, we're, we're very humbled to be able to be able to do this project. And we want to be respectful. So... If people if people don't wish to participate or people have a certain stance they wish to take, we're we're more than happy to respect it. Uh, we're not we're not forcing people to participate in the book. We're not holding a gun to anyone's head. So, um, but I said in general, uh, the support's been tremendous from from communities, from community leaders, from individual fans. Just hearing about it, the the support from up and down has been fantastic and we're really humbled by it very nice well it seems like you guys have gotten a pretty good community backing as it is already and i hope you guys uh continue to push on towards your uh whatever your final end goal may be but uh just looking at what you've accomplished so far i think the community is behind you 100 percent, and you're gonna uh, i'm excited to see what it is i i did my pledge. I did the full pledge. And, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I encourage all of our listeners to at least check it out. Um, if you're listening to this, you can check out our website, pottacular.com, and look at the post that we have for this episode. And there will be a link to the Kickstarter there where you can go and donate. Uh, all you have to do is donate $1 to get a digital copy of the book, guys. It's it's really not that much to, to back it. And, of course, just like how there is with every other Kickstarter, there are tiers that you can do to get bigger and better things. Yeah, our website, communityevolve.com, also has additional information, including information on our rewards and our guests in slightly more detail than the Kickstarter page. So if you only have a wee snoop around, I would advise you to check that out. Very nice. Uh, was there anything else that you guys wanted to kind of mention about the project before? we depart for this show um danny was there anything you could think of i think we've covered all the bases here um no yeah. nothing nothing i found I'm, I'm happy enough very nice well thank you guys for taking time to come on our show and talk about community evolved yeah thanks for having us no problem thank you and thanks for everyone for your support all right well we're looking forward to seeing what you guys are doing thank you guys again for listening at home 
at work or wherever you listen to our podcast. Remember, you can check us out at poddecalert.com. You can also check out our forums. We have ourselves on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, uh, iTunes, Zoom, subscribe via RSS feed, any of that other nice stuff. And uh, we will see you online. And Halo 4 comes out in two weeks. I think everyone here is excited. You guys excited for Halo 4? Yeah. Don't forget to vote. Voting is important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You people overseas. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening, and we will talk to you guys next time.